Hi, today is Wednesday, June 3rd. Good to have you today. We're going to talk about love some more. I'm at Heritage Park in Ovilla, Texas. It's beautiful out here. You may hear a woodpecker, redheaded woodpecker in the tree beside me. It's just beautiful being outdoors. I'm so happy that we're able to do that. Well, today we're going to talk about love. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Put the scriptures up right now. We're going from the NIV. Love is the first fruit of the Spirit that the Apostle Paul talked about to the church at Galatia. And he wanted to make sure that this church was healthy, that this church knew what was going on, that this church knew what it needed. So I wanna show you a picture of me yesterday having a strawberry limeade. Eh, it kinda counts, right? Not the real thing. Sometimes we think we're doing the right thing, we're doing the real thing, and it's kinda substitute. Yeah, there were a few chunks of strawberries in there, but it wasn't the real fruit that I was eating. I had other stuff mixed with it. So what Paul was talking about was the real fruit, the real deal, really eating and feasting on the spiritual fruit because it's healthy. And this week, we're talking about love, which is strawberries. That's what I've named this week is strawberries because at weddings, you see them, Valentine's Day, special celebrations, chocolate covered strawberries, they're great. So we're gonna go to verse five of 1 Corinthians 13. Yesterday we looked at love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. So today verse five says, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. So let's look at these four things today that love should be. First of all, love does not dishonor others. Love doesn't talk about other people and tear other people down while building self up. That's opposite of love. Uh, that's, that's not anything like Jesus. Jesus was about encouraging, building up, speaking good things. And you know, you've heard the old, old adage, if you can't say something helpful or nice, don't say anything at all. So we want to be nice, we want to be kind, and we want to honor people, not dishonor people. You say, well, you know, how do I honor people? Well, prefer them, treat them nice, say nice things to them, say nice things about them, say nice things about them behind their back. What? Yeah, talk good about people behind their back. You know what the opposite of dishonoring or honoring people is, the opposite? Probably gossip talking about them behind their back. So go ahead, talk behind their back, but in a good way. Tell them how much you appreciate them. Let, let, let the word get back to them that you've been speaking well about them. Try it, honor people because that's love. The second thing is love is not self-seeking. Doesn't want to say, hey, this is what I need and I don't care what you need. Uh, if you love me, you'll put up with me and you'll, you'll do what I need. No, it's, it's not about getting everything I need. That's the flesh. Your flesh wants everything. When you were two years old, one of your main words most likely was mine. Mine, that's mine. You can't play with it. You can't have it. It's mine. You know, sometimes in adulthood, we don't grow out of that too much. It's all about mine. But with love, it's not about mine. It's about ours. It's about sharing. It's not about self-seeking what I want. And I'm not going to step on other people's heads to get ahead. I'm not going to climb any kind of ladder except the ladder God provides. I found when God provides a ladder, nobody else is on it. Let that sink in. Why would you want, to, that's dangerous to climb up a ladder with other people on it. Somebody's gonna get hurt and a lot of times it's gonna be you. So the ladder that God gives us is a ladder with no one else on it. We have to climb on our own accord by the insistence of the Spirit. So it's not self-seeking is seeking God. Love, thirdly, is not easily angered. It's not easily angered. You can't have a short fuse when you're filled with love. You can't just blow it, boom, drop of a hat. People shouldn't be walking on eggshells around you, wondering what kind of mood you're in today. They should know what kind of mood you're in. Mood of love. You love people because you love God. So it should be very difficult to make you angry. It should be very difficult to push your buttons. And if you say, well, you know, they know the buttons I have, disengage your own buttons. Yeah, it's tough, it's hard work. Love's hard, 
you know, people give patience a bad rap. Love's tough. Marilyn Hickey last week said, faith is difficult. All of these fruit come at a price and love comes when you act right instead of act up or act out. You act right. You do what the word of God says and you let that come out of who you are. And then the last one, it says, love keeps no record of wrongs. I wanna tell a little story of myself. I've been married 27 years um, in November. It'll be 27 years to the same person, to Shelly. And in those 27 years, you know, we've gone through ups and downs. We've gone through sideways. We've stayed together, we're committed. But there was something that happened early in our marriage, even before we got married, just something that upset me. And I could bring that thing up years later and it would cause a fight or an argument. It just would. And uh, our friend, Ann Fangio, you guys know Ann, she's a counselor for our church. We talked to her about it. I brought it up, it's like, man, we keep getting stuck. It's a silly thing. And it took about 45 minutes, there were some tears. It wasn't a big deal when it came down to it. It hadn't come up anymore. You know, love doesn't keep record of wrongs. Love doesn't keep record of hurts. And when I processed the whole thing, I think I was the one at wrong. And I thought she was. You see how love works? Love owns what we do. So me being upset with Shelly about something for years, and it just kind of under the surface and just bringing it would be like this. Hey, Shelly, I, I got a good strawberry for you. Can you see that? That's embarrassing. This is not Shelly's fault. She doesn't touch my fruit because I have eaten a lot of fruit during the COVID crisis. Uh, this was in the back of the refrigerator. She leaves my little fruit cartons alone. Here, Shelly, here's some, here's some good love. That's nasty. That's molded. I don't want to taste that. Here's what I do want. Here's what Shelly would enjoy. Something fresh, something good, something ripe. Something delicious. This strawberry doesn't need anything added. I could add something to it. Could add sugar and cream and whatever, but the unadulterated flavor of pure strawberry, mm, no joke, that's good stuff. Learn to love, have love in your life. Do the things that God has called you to do. Yeah, it's tough, but it's worth it. Tomorrow, we're gonna look at, at verse six. 1 Corinthians 13, let me give you a little heads up. It says, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. So tomorrow, we're gonna to talk about two things. Love you guys.